Oaks Day, absolutely beautiful. No sunshine yet, but honestly, Warren Moon, I was here yesterday and it was about 179 degrees. So I like the weather here on this 150th Derby weekend. I can't believe the change that's happened from yesterday to today. Yesterday, like you said, it was about 86 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. And now we've got humidity, we got rain, but no raining right now, like you said. I'm into it. I've got Jameis Winston coming up on the show. We're going to talk a little draft, a little Michael Penix. But set the scene here. Does this feel any different than, you know, you're, a, you're an old vet when I it comes to the here. Derby. But this one seems a little special. Well, it's a 150-year anniversary, so that's going to be special. And everything is commemorated today because of that. Uh, and I'm glad I'm here. This is my 22nd Derby. I missed one because of COVID. They didn't have a, well, they had a race, but no fans that year. But this is a place where I have a special group of friends that we all kind of met at the Derby, and we come back here every year, even though we've become really good friends throughout the year, too, but we definitely meet here every year and have a great three days. It's kind of a flex to come every year like that for 21 years. Yeah, this is my uh, favorite sporting event of all sporting events I go to because I've been to World Cups, I've been to Masters, I've been to Super Bowls, I mean, you name it. I love coming to this because of everything that it represents. What do you mean that by that? What makes this so unique? Well, first of all, you got the history, 150 years of this race, the tradition that goes along with it, and what it means to the people back here in, in Kentucky, um, the fashion. I, I love the fashion, being able to Clearly, go to a sporting event you. and dress up. You know, people really take their time to get ready for this thing. It's not like you're putting on the jeans and a jersey and going to a game, right? You actually put some time into what you're going to wear, and then the most exciting two minutes in sports. I mean, the, the race itself is is amazing. And when they they sing my old Kentucky home before the race starts, I mean, there are people bawling in the stands in there. It means something to people down here. So let's talk a little horses. Talk to me about some ponies for tomorrow. I'm thinking You can't Sierra talk to Leo. me about the horses what do you mean? yet. I haven't studied my sheet yet. Okay, so what is the process <laughs> of Warren Moon? You, you, you wait until day of, you get a sheet, and what happens? Over 22 years, you've met a lot of different people that kind of know the know business. Know what they're doing? So I kind of go and look for my tips. Yeah. And then the tips that come out weighing the, the most, like, okay, if this many people are saying this horse is the one to go with, that's the horse I'm going to I go. remember last year, I was shocked. People have binders. Yes. They sit there with yes. binders of it, laminated. I let them do all the homework. And I, just, I just cheat off their, their cheat sheet. <laughs> so, so what would be your biggest tip in picking a horse? I'm looking to fall in love here. I like, I love Mike Rapoli, Forte. That didn't happen last year. It was a late scratch. Now he's got fierceness. He's the favorite. Would you ever bet on a favorite? Yes. you got, yeah? you okay. got to put a favorite, especially if you're going to do like a, a exacta box or something like that. But... Today, because it's raining, it's a wet track, and I think that's something you really want to look at. What do you wet mean horses by that? do best on wet tracks. There's horses that do good on grass, there's horses that do good on dry tracks, and there's horses that do well in, in the mud. So you want to look at that for sure. You want to look where they're coming out of the, uh, the gate. Are they coming way outside and having to come all the way inside to get to the pack, or, or do they have a good starting position? So, and then you look at the jockey, you know, the jockey okay. and, and his history and how, how well he's done in these big races. So there's things I do know to look at, but as far as the horse itself, Itself. I don't know much about the horse itself. What are we talking here? Are you? Are you? It's like funny money, couple, couple hundred bucks, or like when Warren's walking up to money. that window, just like just Warren for fun. Like or are we talking the, like Warren second mortgage? Warren doesn't like to waste any money. There we go, and that's you know? a smart way to be. I, Warren I will get his sheet tomorrow, <laughs> as you should. Yeah. You seem to know a lot about it. You're so passionate about well, it. Well, I'm, I'm a competitive guy, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and that should be our responsible gaming headline for FanDuel, and it should be as we are here. You can only bet on FanDuel if you're not here at Churchill Downs. Go download the app and have some fun. We are here, you mentioned fashion. Last time I talked to you, we were at the Woodford Reserve tent, drinking mint juleps. Yes. And we, you sort of broke news to me about how the Titans were bringing back the Oilers unis. You said, Amy, Amy said it, Mrs. Strunk, she said this is what's happening. Then they did it, you were there in Nashville for the unveiling, I think yeah. we have some photos of there. What was it like to be sort of honored uh, in that way, and this must have felt insane, like a Marvel superhero. Yeah, what I love about what Amy has done, the owner of the uh, of the Titans, is she's brought back all the Oilers into the family, and mm -hmm. we didn't really have a home, all, all former Oilers, because when the Oilers left, they became the Titans, and then the Houston Texans came into Houston, so the players that played in Houston really didn't have a home. They didn't have anybody to call home. So she brought everybody in over the last five or six years, and uh, it's been really great. Now she's brought back the uniforms, and uh, we really feel like we have a home uh, to, you know, to call ours, even though it's the Tennessee Titans. The Titans wore these uniforms Why up against... Why you think I have on this color today, baby? Listen, I see you, we uh, see you, we see you. Huh? Um, 
they wore the unis against the Texans. Texas fans, very pissed yeah. about this. Did they have a right to be upset? I think they have a right to be upset, but the, the Tennessee Titans own that uniform. They own the, the history of the, of the Houston Oilers, so they had a chance to own it themselves, and they didn't want that ownership. They wanted to create their own identity, which makes sense. They're the Houston right. Texans coming in. Let's create our own identity. But now because the Houston uh, Oilers uniforms became so popular coming up, they wanted it back. You can't have it both ways. Are you hearing this drama about the Texans wanting to use that blue? Have you heard this? Yes. Let's I've take heard a look it. here. This year, the Texans sort of, you're saying find their own identity. What do you make of this? They unveiled their alternate jersey, uh, and the whole thing about the color blue went down. Why can't they just <laughs> stay with what they had? I, they had a really nice looking uniform the first time. Why do they have to keep harping on that? I, I, I don't what? understand it. Imitation really flattery? Have your own identity. You have a really good football team right now that won a playoff game last year. They got a chance to maybe go to a Super Bowl this year. Just create your own identity. Forget about the Houston Oilers. Forget about the Tennessee Titans. You and I talked a lot off I camera. If, I think if they weren't in the me. same division, oh, yeah, they would this be wouldn't okay. be as big a deal. I get it. I remember last year, you and I got off camera. We had a really nice conversation about the draft had just happened. CJ Stroud was just taken. Yeah. And you were really proud. You were proud of what's gone on. This year, you look at the same thing. Now, you were a trailblazer as a black quarterback. Yeah. What do you make of, I don't want to call it progress, maybe, or maybe you will, the evolution of that as that's, far as... That's a better word, evolution. Okay. I think uh, you see these guys are just getting more opportunities now than what, what was happening back when I came out of college. And that's, that's all we've ever wanted out of this whole thing was opportunity. If you get an opportunity to show what you can do and you're not good enough, then you move, go on about your way. But if you're not given the opportunity, that, I think that's just not fair, and that's not the American way. This, this country is all about opportunity. So it's happened for African-American quarterbacks, and you see that they're making the most of those opportunities, and we're being drafted high. We're being drafted uh, to franchises to be the, the face of the franchise and all of that. So those are the things I'm proud of because I know I played a small part in that in, in my, my uh, time coming up. You're being humble and saying you played a small role in that, a big part, but I know that you championed Michael Penix before yes. he came out. He gets taken the shock of the draft, yes. of course, to the Falcons where they just gave Kirk Cousins all that, more, that money. How do you feel about the fit? I don't know uh, why it's such a shock because this kid has only led the nation in passing in the last two years. He's only lost three football games in the last two years. I know he has an injury history, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of guys that have injury history and have gone on and had long, long careers. Look at Frank Gore. He played 16 years as a running back, but he had three knee surgeries on, on, on his knees. So I would much rather see a player that, uh, that's come off of an injury and you know how he's going to react as opposed to a guy that's never been hurt before. But uh, I'm glad Michael got that opportunity. I think he's going to a team that's on the rise. I think he doesn't have to play right away, so there's not a lot of pressure on him. And he can learn from a very good player in Kirk Cousins. Well, I think the shock was maybe not that Michael Penix didn't have it, just that he's going to Atlanta where they just gave all of that money to Kirk. So if you're giving all that money to that quarterback, you're wanting to go all in and win now. Give Kirk a weapon well, to play with. And then instead they take Michael. As somebody who champions... Michael Penix, you're happy that he's going to go sit behind someone else? I am. I don't think any young guy should have to come in and play right away. Even Patrick Mahomes didn't play his first year, and I think it really benefited from it being behind Alex Smith. A lot of people wondered why with an Alex Smith you, you draft a, a Patrick Mahomes, or why do you draft Aaron Rodgers when you have Brett Favre? Why do you Jordan draft Love, Jordan Aaron. Love when you have Aaron Rodgers? So they're just going off of that same formula that you got to have a quarterback in waiting especially when your quarterback that's starting is 36 years old and coming off of an Achilles tendon injury. Are you worried about Caleb Williams, given everything you just said, just being trotted out there with the world of expectations on his shoulder? Not at all. He's got it? <laughs> no, I'm really, I'm really nervous for him. He's really? He's got a lot of pressure on him. But I think his personality and his makeup, he can handle it. You saw what he did as a freshman walking into uh, Oklahoma. He just set the world on fire. So I think he's uh, he's equipped to handle it mentally and physically. What would you tell Chicago fans? Is it preach patience? Is it? The Chicago fans have been so patient at that position for so long. I don't think they want to hear patience. But I think they should at least don't expect all the fireworks right at the beginning. Give this kid a, a little chance to, to get his feet wet. And then I think as the season goes along, you'll see him get better and better and better. Titans, any expectations? Anything you want to throw down there? Bold prediction, Will Levis, let's go. What does that smile mean, Warren? <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, they're going to have a tough time with those, those Houston Texans. They have a really good football team. But I think because of the fierceness of that rivalry and now what is becoming, it just keeps seeming to be growing now because of these uniforms. Those are going to be some very physical, nasty games, those two games in the, in the division. Nine games last season for Levis. Mixed results. Yes. Did he prove to the great Warren Moon that he's a franchise quarterback? I, th I think he showed a lot of glimpses of that, you know, especially when he first started. He, I was at his first game. He threw four touchdown passes, but he's been was up and down after that. I think he's just learning what it, it what it takes to be a, a, a young quarterback in this league, because once people see what you got and they have film on you, they know how to defend you. So now he's got to be able to come back this year and rede redefine his game. Uh, Warren, you got to go to all the games. If you were there for the first and you threw four scores, <laughs> why aren't you showing up at every game? Hey, I got stuff to do on the weekends. <laughs> Actually, I have a son in high school playing high school football. Tell so me I, about I'm that. I heard there game. was a, a college visit that you were very happy with. Yeah, we went and visited Stanford. Okay. I mean, we've we visited a, a number of places. He's been to University of Washington. He's been to Oregon. He's been to Oregon State. He's been to SMU. I mean, so he's had some opportunities, but. Um, We'll see what happens. He's got another year, and he's a really good player. He works his tail off, so he's not a quarterback like me. He didn't want anything to do with that. How involved are you in this? You know, we had Marvin Harrison just taken. There's his dad. There's a lot of pedigree gone on. Like, how involved are you in where he's going to go? Uh, I'm very involved because uh, <laughs> I have the time to do it now, and that's something that I wanted to do with him that I didn't do with my older kids. Yeah. Because I was playing and, and my, my career was, just took so much of my time, but I wanted to make sure I'm here for him. and. Uh, like I said, he's a good young player, and he deserves an opportunity. All right, I can't wait to see that. Uh, well, shout out to you know, I don't know, Amy. We got who we got here. Come, get over here. Come over here. This Introduce is one your of my friend. besties. This from, is somebody I did not. This is not I, on my bingo board. I met board. from this uh, uh, from come this event. Down. Tell me how you two know each other. Introduce your friend. Bachelor this is Bay. my friend Bob Guinea. Yes, ma'am. Better known as Bachelor Bob from the Bachelor series, and. Uh, he is just a fine young man. Thank you, sir. Thank <laughs> How did you, very you two much. meet? You met here at the Derby? Yeah, 20 years ago. It's yeah. my 20th Derby with 20 Warren. years ago. Now, are you a guy. Titans fan also, Bob? Uh, you know what? Who I'm do a you fan. Like? I'm a big Detroit Lions guy. Oh, he's a huge oh. Detroit Yeah, big Detroit Lions he's guy. He's from Detroit and he should be. Yeah, he should I'm, be I'm a, a big fan. fan. And we are, uh, I'm, I'm so excited about what's going on in Detroit right now. And <laughs> Warren came in for the draft last week. He got to see my beautiful hometown yes. shine. So it was awesome. It was 275,000 people at That's that draft. That's my biggest fear is to be in that kind of crowd. You did the second round pick. I didn't go out in the stands. I mean, in the crowd, though. <laughs> no, we never I made stayed it out there. back in the back where there was security. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you guys are enjoying your off season. Titans get to work to beat those Houston Texans. The two best looking guys of the draft. I mean, these teeth oh, on shucks. Bob. I can't even deal with it. Uh, we'll be back after this. Jameis, what do, what do you want me to ask Jameis Winston? What uh, would you like to know? Uh, Newly signed to the Browns, backing up Deshaun Watson. That's a unique quarterback situation there. I'd just like to know if he's ready to reinsert himself as one of the better quarterbacks in this league again. Yeah, what do you want me to ask him about those interceptions? Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to even talk about interceptions. Okay. okay? You, you don't. You stay away from the negative. That's right. Look at Focus how on the best positive. Me and Bob are That's just like right. Hanging out like this. All right, we'll be back right here on the Up Adam Show. Chandler. Oh God. Chandler Parsons is out in the crowd. We'll talk about him next. 